and today we're going to talk about handling and storing kite line. There are lots of different ways to do it. I'm going to go through and cover all of them. And the general idea here was that you were paying attention. I am paying attention. <laughs> As I, opposed to looking out of the door. I'm not looking out the door. I was <laughs> focusing on something else. You don't want me to stare you out, do you? <laughs> This is a big problem. What do I do here, Andrew? So today we're going to talk about tangling kite line. Or more constructively, how to avoid tangling kite line. Uh, we're going to look at lots of different ways of storing line and dealing with it and what causes tangles and how to avoid them. Now my first piece of advice is if you want to know about how to handle line, don't ask a sailor. Sailors are the sort of friendly idiots that think that this sort of thing here is neat and tidy. Maybe you think it's neat and tidy as well. So uh, let me just illustrate. Oh my God, Andrew Beatty, what have you done to this? So, I would like to reproduce the problem with the coils of rope on the deck. Now for that, I'm going to use uh, a tape. So I'm just going to take this. Looks nice and neat and tidy, doesn't it? I've got a bar over here. That allows me to... Uh, bring it up and all I'm going to do is pull it off this thing on the table because this is the way it was designed for use on the boat wasn't it it was it was called up so you take the end and, and pull it up and we notice that as we pull it it gets more and more twisted because that's what sailors think is a good idea so that's my point really that uh, doing that just means you end up with a twisted line. So let's have another look at that. Ah, oh, Andrew, help! So the reason this became a mess is a conflict between the way that it was wound and the way that, that it was unwound. Uh, so let's use some terms here. For a circle in three dimensions, there are two things I want to consider. One is a tangent to that circle. So tangent to the circle is, is a line that just touches the edge. And the axis of the circle, which is this way, through, through the middle, around the, around the centre. So, when, when this was wound, it was wound tangentially. And so, to, to unwind it, you need to unwind it tangentially. So, so the line comes off in a tangent at the edge. Do this back up again. If I take a stick, make it happen. If I, if I take a stick and put it through, and put it through the middle of this and pull in the direction of that axle, as we come off, we can see that every time we go around once more. We get another wrap around the middle because it's a complete turn. It's a complete turn of the line that, that goes around there uh, for every one. So we end up with all this twi twisting going on. Now, if I take that out, we, 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 we end up with all this 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 twist in the line. So. 
two different ways of winding and two different ways of unwinding. Winding tangentially and winding axially. So let's let's try this in a, in a way that's more related to kite flying now. Many people will recognize this. It's known as a halo reel. A very simple, straightforward plastic part. I'm gonna take my kite line and wind it round. And as I'm doing this, I'm winding in an axial manner. So the, the reel is staying still and I'm moving the, the line round. So it's coming in, as it were, along the axis. And as we've just seen, that's, that's a way that causes a full twist in the line every time that we, that we go around. Uh, you can take that twist out by, by taking the line off in the opposite direction to the line that, that you put it on. So if I do this, every twist that went on as I, as, as I wound it, it's coming back off again. However, most people don't wind that way. So if we wind on like this, a good amount. What you would normally do with it, with this reel is allow the kite to pull it and allow it to move in your hand. So this is different to the to the reel of tape. With the reel of tape, it, the the tape was put on tangentially, and then when I lay on the ground and pull, pulled up, it's coming off axially. So it goes on with, with no twists, and as you take it off, the, uh, the, 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 twist, the twists start to appear. With this, it's the, op it's the opposite way. As I wind on, I am twisting the line, and if I pull off tangentially, then the twists stay in the line. So in order to get off here without twisting, you need to take it off the same way, same way it went on. I think I'd like to do a little demonstration to illustrate this a bit better. Help, Andrew! So, I'm going to become a two-line flyer for a moment. I'll take my two lines and wind a two-line kite onto my reel. It's a little bit slow, so off. I'm going to finish this off camera. So, with the help of Kathleen, I've just wound uh, a pair of lines on, into here. So I'm going to pretend to be a two-line two flyer. But this helps to show us the, the twisting. So I'm going to take this off now, just by pulling it down. So I'm not going to take it all the way off. So I've taken that, that off and I've taken it off tangentially. I'm now going to wind it back on. This is very much like kite flying. You go out, you fly your kite, you come back, stick it back on again. So there we go. We're back on again. So we're just reproducing what we normally do as a kite fly. So we come out the next day and we fly, fly this line again. Put the kite on, let it go up, fly my kite, get to the end of the day, bring it back in again, wind it on axially, and this gets more and more difficult because it's more and more twisted. Ah. 
That's the equivalent of three days kite flying and already my reel's in a horrible twisty, twisty mess. And if I go out the next day and do the same, it's just going to get worse and worse and worse. You can see the, the, the twist in the line all the way down. So, uh, what are we going to do about that? Well, first of all, don't use this twist and untwist method. However, another thing that you can do, if I, uh, if I take it back off again, if I want to fix the problem, one way to fix it is to take the, the line in the other hand and wind it back on from the opposite side. So this is twisting it back in the opposite direction. There we go, we're back on. And now I'm gonna take this and unwind it again. There we go, we're back all the way off. And now wind it back on again. And then once more, let's pull it off. And wind it back on, on the reverse side. And it looks like I need at least one more attempt. Because the first one that we did off camera when I was taking off the, the original reels, that was also twisting. So, that's one of the reasons that I never use halo rings because the inclination is always to put twist in the line. Thanks, Alfie. Now, where were we? So I'm gonna try again with a different type of reel. As you can see, this one has different sides. One side that's uh, a hard 90 degree angle, and one side of which is sloped. So I'm gonna take this and wind it on. And this type of winder is de designed to encourage you and make, make it easy instead of holding it in the middle and letting it spin to let it come off the the reel in the same way that you put it on I can do that just with gravity here it just comes straight off as it's coming off the same side it went on uh, you can be assured that it's coming off and it's not twisted so put it back on again putting it on in the same direction we did last time and we're not getting a build up of, of, of twist in the line And it's not giving us a twisting problem. I can let it off multiple times. Still no twisting. It is of course twisting on here, but it's being untwisted as it comes off axially again. So, a different approach here. This is so frustrating. I'm just, I've had it. Help, Andrew. In the entertainment industry, you'll often see technicians dealing with uh, microphone cables or speaker cables or video cables. Uh, if you ever want to, he to help them, I strongly suggest you don't. Their cables are horribly, horribly expensive uh, are very fragile and those guys really really care about kinks and twists in 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 their cables so uh, I strongly suggest not helping them however let's learn their technique so I have a bit of cable here and I'm going to take it I'm going to put it in my left hand and make a natural loop 
to go there. That's not right, is it? Let me try again. Um, still can't do it. I'm not very good at this. I'm going to ask for some help. Dean, go and help me. And Dean, when you make this video, could you please remember that we have a family audience and try not to expose your face more than is strictly necessary. Thank you. So Andrew has asked me to make this video and of course it's not the way that I do things but I think I can work it out. I keep things like this in a bucket and because of the way I do it, it will never get tangled. But he wants me to demonstrate the over under method. So I'll demonstrate it like this. It's very simple. People do it a lot of different ways. One way is to start with your, if you, doesn't matter, you can do it left or right, but you just have to do this thing. So here's the bitter end pointed away from the body, and here's the coil. I just place that, and you see the nice round root right there. Then the next time I take my hand like this and I turn it towards my body. See my thumb? And then my thumbs come together towards my body. You get your loops even. Now this time you go repeat what you did the first time. Thumbs together, over under. Okay? Under, over, over, under, so forth. All right, now you can do that, but with this much line, you'll never be able to keep it straight. Um, so you're gonna have to do another method, but if you are gonna use this method with this thin line like this, then it's imperative that you secure it. The way sailors do it is they bunch the top and then they go like this they wrap this around like that and then they leave enough to come through and go over and tie that off and then that is how they hang it on the on the wall all right that's the over under method all right Thank you, Dean. I knew I could count on you. Another popular way of winding up your line is on a card or a stick, such as this one. It's by FlexiFoil. Remember that? So I'm going to take this and wind on. I'll put it on with a figure of eight motion. Because this way, when I put on, I put on half a twist, I then take off half a twist because each one is in a different direction. There's a clockwise and anti-clockwise. So I put it on, take it off, put it on, take it off. So the net effect is that the line isn't getting twisted as you're as you're winding. If you were to put it all on, just going round and round and round, then. Uh, it, it would get, get twisted and it means that you need to laboriously make sure that you're unwinding your line carefully, otherwise it gets into a tangle. So, I'm going to take this and you can of course carefully undo it, but when I want to fly a kite I start out in the morning, I want to get the kite in the air, I don't want to spend time messing with lines. So I'll simply drop it, and I'll pull it straight off the stick, as fast as I can. And it just comes straight off. And we're done. And we haven't twisted the line because every twist, if, uh, the line was not twisted on the... So it, it moves around and bounces, but the, the net, net effect is it, it twists a bit and it untwists a bit and, and you end up with no total twist in the, in the line. So that's worth doing. However, 
it does have a disadvantage, which is that it becomes quite large. As you do this, it's like you're putting air into the winding. Every time you go across, the winding becomes faster and faster. And certainly with this fat wine, uh, this small winder, there's no way I'm going to be able to get all of this line onto this little winder. I'll keep going for a while here. Oh, that's really quite enough. I'm going to make a mark here. It's a tiny little knot. To show how much I managed to get on, on here. So as you can imagine, I don't want to take it and keep winding it the same way because you're winding up the, the line. So what I do is like a hybrid of the two. I'll start here and go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then twist the other way. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and the other way. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one, two, And there we go, and I'm at, I'm at the same knot that, that I made earlier. And it's really not a tool because it doesn't have that knitting on there that bulks up the line. So, so by, by using the some one way and some, some, some the other way, you get more, more line onto the handle. And still the net effect is that, you, that you're not twisting it because you've, you wind a few on and you wind a few back off again. So, if you like using sticks, that's, that's the way to do it. <laughs> this is so frustrating! Help! <laughs> Andrew! Help! While we're looking at sticks, I would just like to, to show off this. Many years ago, my, my dear friend, Corey Jensen, came to visit us in our home and he brought, brought with him a, a gift for me, which was this winder, which says handcrafted by Chaz Hendleton, or Chaz Hendleton, I'm not sure. Uh, click, clearly handmade, beautiful piece of work. And uh, Corey selected this one to give to me, knowing the, the things that I fly, simply because it takes quite a large amount in every single wrap. And that says back to uh, the beginning again, and we've hardly started on, on this winder. Uh, be beautiful piece of work. Also, rather too, too nice to have bouncing around on the end of the line. I don't, really don't want to get it damaged, but uh, another alternative. Andrew! 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 <laughs> Kathleen! Andrew! 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 Thank you, Jim. It's great to have a thespian amongst my friends. Tim Alverson, in his own style, has designed a winder which fundamentally works the same as any other stick winder, but he's applied his engineering prowess and his artistic mindset to produce something beautiful. You can reach through one of the holes and hook a loop of line over one of the ears of the winder in order to, to tie it off wherever you happen to be conveniently. And it is just a thing of beauty. It's a lovely, lovely piece of work. So far, I've been showing you the ways that other people deal with the kite lines. However, I'm a great believer in this simplest piece of equipment, just a bag. 
Now we've got some nice printed bags here, but I've, I've, I've used rubbish bags and things that I found on the beach to, to, to put lines in. And this is the simplest method. All you do is stuff the line on the bag. And there's no winding, there's no special technique. If we look from this camera here, it's just randomly in the bag. There's nothing special about it. You just stuff it in the bag. I think I'll take my lot out. Uh, this really is the simplest method. And so, so when we're putting it into the bag, we are not putting any twists in it. It just goes in the bag and it essentially it forms a mat as it goes in. So every new bit of line that you put in lays on top of the line that's underneath it. There's no, the, there's no twists. And that means that when you take it out, you can't take it out fast enough. It, it just, just pulls out really really nicely i started this taking the mickey out of sailors however this is the method not so much used by sailors but used by lifeboat men and 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 emergency personnel because they they want to be able to do lines that they, they throw to people and they do just like this they put the line into the bag so the only weight in the bag is the line And then to throw it to someone who's, who's in, in the river or in the sea, you simply hold on to the end of the line and you throw as hard as you can. So you're throwing all of the line and it just comes sailing out the back of the bag uh, as quickly as it can. One of the organizers here at Umake works as a rescue professional. So Nick, could you please demonstrate this? Thank you. Thanks, Nick. That was perfect. I hope I haven't seen the bloody video yet. <laughs> so that's the way that I pack all my lines. It's uh, fast and it's easy and convenient. Uh, it doesn't weigh very much because uh, it is only a very light, lightweight bag. Not that it's big enough to, to get a decent arm movement to, to, to stuff it in with. Uh, and you don't have to take special care of it. If I take this and put it on top of a big compression bag and throw it across the airport, like... Uh, the good people at Delta are, are, are inclined to do. You're gonna crack this, but this doesn't crack. It uh, it just deforms and, and, and no, no ill, Ill come, comes to it. And it doesn't matter how much you mess it up, inside it's still, it's still, still, still the right way. No way, works with all the line, just, just perfect. This is ridiculous. So tangled. Help, Andrew. <laughs> Help now. The Oita method is chain stitching. Let's start off. I'm not practicing enough for this. I'm sure we're going to start with a loop. So they start with a loop and I'm so pleased at how, how, how poorly practiced I am with this. And pull it through and pull it through, pull it through. And the Wita will chain stitch their entire kite lines and the pilot lines and everything. Just keep going. And we'll do the 
the line and we'll change this to the bridle and everything. Now I've only gone so far here, but you end up with a line that's a third the length of the line that it was to start with. So then Awita will take that and take the chain stitch line and chain stitch that. And it works for them. And to be fair, it's not putting twists in things. However, chain stitching has a problem. The problem with chain, chain stitching actually comes at the end because I'm going to have to chain stitch a full line here to show you. Not long now, girl. I might be, this will take a while. <laughs> chain but the problem with this is uh, unless you're practicing skills you need to undo it correctly so if I undo this if I get it wrong it's just tangling I'm getting that to work properly, I do know how to do, but I can't do it in front of the camera. No, that's right. Do that, I think. That's it. I know what I'm doing. Uh, so, it's very laborious to to, to chain it like that, it takes a long time. Uh, I'm not sure I really understand the benefit. And it makes pulling it out of the bag and laying it in a straight line a skilled job. Because if you don't know how to fix that, that twist, you end up undoing every single knot all the way back down again. Yeah. So, we love them very much, but I don't understand the French. Die neue Schnur ist angekommen. Von Andrew aus Schottland. Ah, mal gucken, was er da so geschickt hat. Oh, was ist das denn? Was soll das denn für ein Knoten? Oh, und noch mehr. Ah, Andrew. The most trivial way of, of dealing with line, and one of the ways I've actually been using here as I've been making these videos, is just to leave the line in a heap. I'll do it here on the, on the table. So there's no organisation at all. No twisting because I'm not making any twisting movements. Just leaving it in what is frankly an untidy heap on the table. Or on the floor. Or in my van. Or wherever it happens to be handy. And it doesn't look pretty. But it is perfectly organised. Each piece of line that I put down lies on top of the lines underneath. So, provided you don't do something really silly and fish underneath and pull out the one at the bottom and pull it up through, as long as you take the end and simply pull it off, you can't pull it off too fast. It's, uh, yeah, it's perfectly organized, ready to come off and up to your kite or into the air. So, one of the ways of organizing line that I use the most is simply to dump it down and lift it back up again without a care in the world, not doing anything to, to look at it because that simply works. 
it doesn't matter whether you are laying it on a table, putting it on the floor, sticking it into a bag, dumping it into a bucket, it all works the same way. I don't fish, but it's worth taking a moment to to look at the way that they wind fishing reel. Again, there are there are two ways of doing it. Since I don't have any of the equipment, I've had to go onto Google and f find some images. We can see a fly fishing reel. This is a reel which works tangentially, so the fly fisherman or the fly fisherwoman has to has to wind the handle in order to let the, the line in or let go and simply pull it out. So it works tangentially. In this picture, we can see a spinner reel. In here, we have a reel that does not move. However, when you wind it in and out, there is a bar which circles around it and applies an axial winding onto the reel. And when you wish to cast and throw your typically uh, a hook on with a with a lead weight so you have something that you can properly throw when you throw that you throw it with the uh, with the winder disconnected so the line simply falls off the end of the spool so let's talk a little bit about packing bridle lines to demonstrate this i'm going to pick one of our latest innovations well lots of people don't really like having pilots in in kite displays so the latest thing that we've come up with is the invisible pilot kite this is the two meter version uh and yeah to to to, to make the pilot just disappear at, at the top of your stack however this is probably not the best choice for uh for use on video let me find a different one So I have this with the bridle attachment point blocks headed round the tail attachment point. So it comes up, comes out of the bag, no tangles in the bridle, ready to use. And to put this in the bag, again, because I'm being fussy, it's the lark's head from here onto this point at the back. Now, in, in some kites, in some kites they they put a little thing here at the front with, with Velcro so that you can attach your, your pilot point here. But I don't actually really approve of that because that means taking the end of the bridle the bit that you don't want through the rest of the bridle and putting it right up here at the at the head of the bridle and you have it down at the back where it's completely separate and away from the rest of the bridle then it can't get itself tangled and the rest of the bridle can just stop in at the top and it's ready to pull out the bag the way I did just a moment ago. On, on some of the larger bags, there is uh, a loop on the inside of the, the bag where to, to help you get things right, it is it's a handy place to take the towing point and, and tie it off inside the bag with the purpose of keeping the end of the bridle out of the rest of the bridle because that's all you need to do to stop the bridle from getting tangled. However, I want to show another issue here. I'm doing this here with, uh, with a small kite, just because it's small enough to pack easily on the video. I'm gonna put this one, I'm gonna put it in bridle first. This is all your fault, Andrew.
Now imagine with me for a moment that we're, that, that, that we're packing this and we're packing a large kite. And somewhere on the floor, there is a loop of bridle, let's show it on this camera. Somewhere on the floor, there is a loop of bridle that's on the floor. It's very easy when you're packing to pass that back to to move the bag over a piece of bridle and then, then put the whole whole lot back in. But if you do that, you're passing the entire bridle through that loop. That's a not happening. That's a tangle being being created as you do that. So when you're packing the big kites and you're fighting with it and you get stuffing in and, and working hard, it's really easy to have a spare bit of bridle which is lying on the floor, which you move over and therefore cause a tangle when you bring everything up and back into the bag. I'm gonna undo that. Otherwise it's only gonna frustrate me next time and stuff it back into the bag. Let's have another look at something else. Andrew, I could use some help here. Some guidance, please. So, I've, I've tied off the end of this and to chain stitch in the normal manner, you would start by creating a knot to hold it and then chain stitch from here. For a start, it takes time. I just don't have the time to mess around. I've got kites to fly or I've got dinner that I want to have. So having done that, if you then if you then go ahead and pack this, you've brought all of the bridle together, which makes it really easy to take this and I'm doing it deliberately here, but accidentally pull the entire bridle through another part of the bridle because you've got it all together. Whereas if if you got it out and the end of the bridle is the last thing you're packing anyway, it's the last thing to go in the bag. Or the first thing to go in the bag and there's no opportunity to put the, the bridle through itself i need to find that problem and fix it well i'll find it later uh the, the other thing is that i'm doing this that one worked that time that's good Some, sometimes it gets uh confused as you're as you're taking it out but uh I find this often as I get things from the factory that have been, been chain, chain stitch. I'm out on a, on a windy day and the knot it starts with has been tied tightly and doesn't fall under um, as, I'm, uh, as I'm doing it and I end up with a kite that is trying to inflate and this knot here has tied tight and the pilot's pulling against me and the kite's pulling against me and this can be a problem to, to get undone. And again, for what? It doesn't actually gain you anything. Voilà, c'est quoi ce bordel encore? Ça c'est en... ça c'est du Andrew tout craché. Non mais regarde le sac de, de merdier quoi. Regarde ça. C'est quoi ce truc là? Andrew, mince, qu'est-ce que t'as fait avec notre cerf volant? Peter Lynn, we love him dearly, but he does some ugly things. And one of the things he does is take his kite line and wind it in a ball. And every time I'm going around this, I'm putting in a full twist in a very short bit of line at the end. His reason for doing this is not having to have a bag, which is what he would, he would normally do, and keep hold of it through the day. Because the guy just is so disorganized, yeah, he can't keep a bag in his pocket all day and doesn't have somewhere to put things. So, I'm doing this. 
but I'm minimizing the number of twists that I'm putting into it because every time I go around, I'm changing hand. So, twist in one direction and twist in the other direction. So if you look at if you look at Peter's line, it's horribly, horribly twisted. Is the archetypal example of somebody that flies on horribly twisted line. But by doing this and changing all the time, the net effect is there's not very much, many twists going onto that ball. I twist them all along in the same direction with my left hand and my right hand. And of course, this is easy to undo, just leave it on the floor and pull it off. So I've got Kathleen here. Kathleen. What is the worst possible way of winding a kite line? Round your arm, between your hand and your elbow. You mean like this? Uh -oh. No, hand and elbow, that's it. Like that. Yeah. <laughs> I can't get it right now. <laughs> <laughs> like that. Yeah. And this is a bad idea. It's a doubly bad idea. But first of all, every time I go around, you can see see the twist building here. I'm putting a full twist in the line. And worse than that, every time I'm I'm going around, I'm putting the new bit of line entirely around all of the rest of the line. Right? I can think of no more efficient way of tangling your line. And of course, this is the the way that every random member of the public will choose to do if they get to your line before you do. So I've had lots lots of practice at, at undoing this. My experience is that if you do that, it takes about half an hour of one person who knows what they're doing to untangle a hundred meters of line that had been wound in that manner. So if you see somebody doing it, shoot them first, ask questions later. Let's talk about untangling. So I should create a tangled line, just like that, for this video. I'm gonna hate myself for this. <laughs> <laughs> I can feel it happening. Okay. So let's take that and put it down. Find the end. I've lost the end there. There's the end. Try to pull it off. Oh, now it's going to do it perfectly. Look at that. <laughs> you look at that. Have yeah. you ever seen that? <laughs> oh, we're going wrong. We're going wrong. And we're tangled. So, to get this sort of stuff undone, look for loops and pull them out. There's another loop. And just be patient and work your way through it. This is nothing compared to the way that people tangle my line for me. <laughs> Look for loops.
So you're working down this, start working at the top, and just look, look for the way through, look for anything that's in the way, and just pull it up and over and out the way. As I've done that, I've just created a, a pile on, on the floor in the way that I showed on the, on the table earlier because I know I can pull it off the pile really quickly and easily and there are no tangles. So although I have reels here that I've used for, for demonstration, I actually got those in order to demonstrate. I don't, I don't use reel, reels at all now with one exception. I have a couple of kilometers of bunting. Now, when I first made the bunting, I stuffed it in a bag because that's the easy way with, to deal with it and it doesn't take up too much space in the van and it's easy and simple and straightforward. However, bunting has two problems. One, it really is very prone to tangling because the individual bunts stop line from, from pulling through. When I was untangling here, I'm able to pull, pull bits of line, line out of the, the, the tangle but with, with, with bunting, each one tries to get stuck as, as you're pulling it out. I, I can spend half an hour trying to untangle 10 meters of bunting. It's really, really, really nasty. Uh, so it has, has the problem of being very prone to, to tangling. And also, also has the problem that I've gone to put on a display somewhere and supply my, my own bunting. And the people that I've, I've done this for are very grateful for, for me doing this. So when I'm bringing the kites down, they, unrequested, will go and try to sort out my bunting and take it all down. And they'll take it and they'll wind it around their arm and things like that. <laughs> right? I'll need to come from way the, the far side of the arena in order, in order to stop them and, and stop them from, from doing that. So for my bunting now, I now have it on hose reels. So I have a hose reel that, that I wheel out and take it off and I leave the hose reel in the field. So if somebody wants to come and help, you tie off one end securely so that it can't start at that end. They, they work out the place to start is at the hose reel and they take the hose reel and wind it in. And it, it tends to stop them from ca causing me difficulty with my bunting. Because at the end of an event, I've spent more than a day trying to sort out bunting that somebody has helped me with. I'd like to say thank you to Kathleen for helping with me with uh, re recording this and providing me with, with a live audience to, to talk to. It's really dull trying to speak into a camera. There's nothing there. Thank you very much anyway.